Pinsato's Place is brought to you by... From audio to Emmys, our guest is going to teach you a lot about ways you can make money and use your craft. We've got winners, we've got contests, we've got a lot of stuff, because you're at the place, Pensado's Place. Hey guys, welcome to this week's show. Herb and I were recently talking, we were kind of proud of some of the things we've accomplished with the show, and we're very happy that we've shown you so many ways to, to make music and to make great records. And, and we started thinking, maybe we gotta figure out how to get you guys a little cash. So this week's <laughs> show is how to turn all of this information into money. Yeah, that's a good one, absolutely. Well, let's, uh, let's get our homework out of the way all and right. get to it. Let's do it, my friend. So, of course, we're coming to you live from the Art Institute of California at Los Angeles. Double yay. <laughs> that's a double yay. Um, get to Facebook, Twitter, and our YouTube page. Get some information to us. Talk to us. We'll get back to you. If we're a little bit slow on that, we don't mean to be, but we, but we will do that. Uh, a hello to our friends, as usual, Vintage King, big gala this weekend. Down at their place, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool, space. Very cool uh, space. You've heard us talk about it a lot. Vintage King LA, it's incredible. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be down there for their gala opening this weekend. Um, we've got Jason Cropper in the chat room. You got something for Jason? Want to stump him? I do. I can't remember how the hell to get down there. <laughs> so how? <laughs> Email me the directions again. <laughs> <laughs> the directions to VKLA are part of it. Um, and uh, and speaking of our avid buddies who we, we love, you and Will were up in Las Vegas uh, doing something at the oh, Palm, man, right? Great time. Will and I had such a wonderful time. There's there's no no better host and friend than, than Zoe and Pat Thrall. They made us feel really welcome. She's a superstar among, uh, among studio managers coming out of Hit Factor in New York. Just right, a wonderful right. time. Her. Will um, Will called me and he said, man, I'm so enthralled with Zoe. She just, oh. she killed it. Not only as a person, but her background. Yeah. Like, she's got yeah. chops. Very, and very she's special with... person. So we had, a, the guys had a great time up there at the Palm. Um, Avid, um, we shot something for them with for our Avid family um, and uh, had a great time. Thanks for that. Oh, can I mention uh, something? Sure, of course. Um, Anthony and the guys shot a, a thing with... Uh, which which Marsalis is the trumpet player? Wenton? I think so. Wynton. Man, an incredible piece about New Orleans and a, a very, very, very worthy um, um, charity type thing for that. So great. Keep an eye out for that. So let's uh, uh, let's announce our inbox pro winner for this week. It is drum roll. Jason Driscoll from Pennsylvania. Jason, right. congratulations. Good for you. We'll make sure we get that to you. Congrats. Um, our new friends, uh, our isotope friends, we have a winner of their alloy too, and this guy is from a place that you've been and know about, well, Malaysia. I've, I've been close. Oh, okay. I, I haven't quite been there, but I love that part of the world mm -hmm. for, for reasons you know. Of course, My absolutely. wife is from that part of the world. So congratulations to this week's alloy two winner. It is Brian Limas. I think that's how you pronounce it. Brian Limas. Let's give him applause. Congratulations, Brian. And last but not least, before we get to our great guest and our great ITL, um, we've got a brand new Indaba contest. So, here are the details. You can mix a track called Muffaletta from Billy Martin, uh, Billy Martin of Medeski, Martin and Wood, and his band Wicked Knee. Um, couple of key components here for you that are very, very cool. One, you can win some money. 500 bucks are at stake here. Even better, I think, is your mix may be officially released on this album. It'll go through the process of, of judging and so on and so forth. Dave will be involved in final judging, and obviously the band, Billy Martin, will make the, be the final arbiters. We're excited about that. And the winner of that contest will be interviewed on Pensado's Place. So win some dough, 500 bucks. Have your, record, have your mix on a record, incredible, and be interviewed on our show. Oh, pretty good. Yeah, guys, 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 guys. Remember, you know, don't just go for, for like great sounds. Give this guy a great emotional mix. Think about what you're doing. I want you guys to really get this this opportunity. I really want one of you guys to be on this record. So Absolutely. work hard for us. Absolutely. We're counting on you. So you'll download the dry stems and enter at indabamusic.com forward slash Pensado's Place. Obviously, that's sitting on the screen, so you do that. The only rules to know are submissions in by October 10th, 5 o'clock Eastern. Voting ends October 17th, 5 o'clock Eastern. Get to indabamusic.com forward slash Pensado's Place. Make that happen. We want to see you on the record. Why don't you introduce our ITL, man? Oh, this week's ITL was kind of a special one for me. 
I was trying to show you, sometimes when you get a mix or sometimes when you finish a production, you want to take certain critical elements and kind of make them special. We use the term enhance, I think, at some point in the video. But it's, it's kind of self-explanatory. And, and this is by Herb and mine's friend, Josh and Mahogany, two very talented people. So I think you're going to like this. It's a little different ITL. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today I'm going to try and do something a little bit different. Um, I've been trying to give you some what you'd call tips and techniques and things along the way. Today uh, I, I've been working on a song this week I really, really love. It's by an artist named Mahogany Ray. Uh, incredible stuff. It's, 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 it doesn't sound like anything I've mixed before and it, it was a bit of a challenge to keep it what it was but enhance a little bit. And uh, the producer is Josh Head, a uh, gifted producer that I've worked with before. Mahogany Ray, R-A-Y-E, check her out on YouTube. And um, so I'm going to play a little piece of this song. It's very non-traditional. I broke like shattered glass Didn't know the man I had would take shakers are composed of two stereo tracks of shakers. Josh gave me a, a track of rain sound. Didn't quite know what to do with it. So let me play the rain sound. I mean, I didn't know what to do with that. So I thought, man, the shakers are pretty important. So here's, here's the two shake. Here's the one shaker sound. Second shaker. Nice stereo image. So what I did was I, um, I hipped up the, the rain sound. I side-chained it. So now the shaker is controlling the rain sound. So every time you see the, the amount dip, that's, that's taking the, the, the rain down that amount. Anyway, I thought that was cool. So, now another thing I thought was 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 interesting was I wanted to get a really defined middle. I've shown you this before, but I've never quite done it this way. On the music, I put this new plug in, saturator. Notice how it's nice and wide. So I'm taking some of the middle out. So here's without it. Um, we're flying, we're, we're, we're moving through this pretty quick because some of these things I've shown you, but I'm just showing you in, in a new context so that you can kind of get a feel for, for how to solve problems. Let's, let's think of it that way. Let's take a look at the bass. The bass was, was giving me a little more um, of a challenge. It had a couple of frequencies that that I, I, I had to address. Here's the bass track. Now you notice this is an automation move on the bass track. That automation move is this plug in here. So let's, let's check it out. automation move gives me a little bit more of this frequency. So you can tell I'm adding a little more tack, I'm being a little more aggressive. Now that part of the song is the chorus. And then once I 
brought it into the chorus, I felt it sounded good in the second verse. Another problem I had to, to deal with, uh, oh, this is a new UAD compressor. I, I put this across the bass. And then um, I added a little bit of 46 cycles. Um, UAD plug-in VOG, it, it just adds a little bit of sub, which I liked, and then our automated EQ. So let's listen to it with all these things off. Back on. Okay, now you, you'll, you'll say, oh, Dave, that sounds pretty good. Well, I had to pull out a little bit of 100 selectively with uh, our old buddy because I liked it in some spots, but it just kept peeking on me a little bit. And then uh, another compression. And then I did, some, I very rarely use peaks this sharp, but I kind of had to in this case. So let me play it without these guys. To me, it sounded better soloed when I did that, but I, I like this better inside the track. And then, and then, um, because I was thinking non-traditional, he gave me a flute part. I thought, man, what the heck am I going to do with that? So here's the flute part he gave me. But in this part of the song, Mahogany wanted it to be a little eerie. So what I did to it was, I kind of messed it up a little bit. And then I recorded it, but let me play it to you solo. Now that was eating up a lot of processing, so um, I, I printed that track, and when I printed it, uh, it, I noticed it was a little off balance, so all I did was raise the right side a little bit, and then I, I put, put my old buddy Dr. MS on it, and so what I ended up using in the song was... So let me show you the plugins I used. I used um, a preset on uh, Isotope um, Spectrum that I really like. Gave it kind of a little haunting thing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using sharp high and low pass filters to create that little notch. And then I'm using the Pan Man. And then once I get once I printed that, it goes down to here and it does something else. So now let me show you what it's doing in the track. It, it this part of the song is, is supposed to be kind of haunting. So you see how it kind of contributes to the vibe of the song. And then one last thing, everybody keeps coming on the show talking about spring reverb. So uh, I had not used them in quite a while. So I thought, man, you know, this would be the perfect song because it, it's got a real cool spirit to it, kind of like some of the records some of the guys on the show have been talking about. So here's the vocal soloed. I'm broke like shattered glaze. Didn't know the man I had. So I took TL Space and I loaded up a, um, a spring reverb, tweaked it a little bit, look at there, put it in mono, put it in mono, and, and let me A-B it for you. This, this is without it. I'm broke like shattered glaze. And this is with it. I'm broke like shattered glaze. Didn't know the man I had. Man, there's something to this mono spring reverb thing. I, I, I hope you guys are, are experimenting with that. 
and uh, let me know if you want me to go into detail on, on any of these things. Go back and listen to the, um, to the whole, all of it blued together and, and, and see what you think. Okay? All right. Hope you got something out of that. I really love that song. That was Josh Herb and, mm -hmm. and Mahogany. And Mahogany. And they're really, really a great team. Guys, I've been trying to put this together since I first uh, met Wade. He, 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 he Facebooked us a while back, Herb, but mm -hmm. he was the cat that remember the, the remember. bring us on the... Uh, uh, huh? Ward. Ward. I mean, what did I say, Brad? <laughs> oh, my God. I, I have... Medical reasons. Um, <laughs> And so I'm really happy that, that he's here today because this is going to be a great show. Get, I normally ask you to rewind the show and look at it. Today you need a pencil and paper. This is going to be a fact-filled show. It's going to be really good. So let's get started. Man, Ward, thank you so much. I know you're busy. I know, I know that uh, it, it, was, it, it was an imposition to take some time out of your busy day, but you are a fan of Pensada's place, I, I am. hear. I am. I am. I watched, I watched it since the beginning, actually. Oh, you wow. Know, so I, I try and watch it when I can in my office, and if I don't get a chance at work, I'll watch it at home. A lot of times, like when you do the uh, In the Layers, I'll, I'll watch that at, at home through my you know, good monitors and uh, stuff, just so I can kind of really hear what you're doing with some of that stuff. And that's great. And I've, like I told you, I've told a number of my composers and stuff on shows, you got to watch what he did with Eric Valentine and that drum umbrella, oh. which I thought was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah. And so, yeah, that was Will Thompson did that, our yeah. producer. That was great. But uh, so our guests, will, I mean, our audience will know, you're, you're the vice president of music, all things music, for 20th Century Fox, which is a Fox TV. Yeah. And uh, part of that responsibility, you just won two Emmys? Yeah, uh, for Homeland and for Modern Family, so comedy and a drama, so the studio is really excited, and it's, that's wow. a big deal for us. Congratulations, man. Yes. Congratulations. And then, and then you've also got The Simpsons, uh, Family Guy, uh, Sons of Anarchy. Uh, Glee. Glee. Yeah, that little thing called Glee. Yeah. <laughs> if I say, uh, one more time, Herb's going to hit me. Uh, and... Um, I <laughs> did it. Bones, Bones, my daughter, that's her favorite show. Yeah. But, uh, man, what an incredible run. I mean, gee whiz. How, do, how, oh, wait a minute, Herb, I forgot. He opened for Motley Crue. Yeah, that was, that was before the Fox stuff. Were you in a band or a solo I was, artist? Yeah, I was in a band. I was in a band, and we, uh, we were in New York City at the time, and then mm -hmm. we got to open up for Motley Crue at the Beacon, which was probably like my highlight of my band days and you know that was like the start of uh, when I started actually producing on my own and doing you know learning how to record on ADATs when those were the thing and wow. I had one of those yep. and did my own little demos and and so and I worked at Warner Chapel before that and they had a little recording studio I'd work with these writers from uh, London and New York and I'd record them mm -hmm. and so that's kind of how I learned my chops and this was before there was a Pensado's place where <laughs> you'd have to actually ask the guy during coffee Little, how, little, yeah, how do you do this? Yeah. And uh, for some reason, I have this noise. How do you fix that? And, <laughs> and so, but anyway, that's where I started. Well, in Pensado's place, we actually teach you how to celebrate noise. We're, oh, you know, we're not anti-noise here. Yeah. But all that early footprinting must have just been really the foundation which allowed you to go to where you where you went now and then allow you to have the kind of conversations you have because these this is in-depth stuff this is important the mu music for your shows are critical yeah uh, they are it takes, a, it takes a level of expertise to deal with yeah that. and you know and also I, you know I deal with people who are at a phenomenal level on the show creator side yeah you know multi Emmy winners and some of them even come from the film side who do TV yeah and then I've got my composers who are multi Emmy award-winning guys who studied at conservatories and are you know, beyond my abilities. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I sort of land between the two of them to try and you know, help the communication, make sure everybody's happy with what they're getting. And then mm -hmm. we have a, a network, who, which is what the show is being right. made for, and they'll have a point of view. So yes. there's a lot of people with a point of view um, even beyond what it would be for a record even, yeah. oh, you know, for like more. an artist. You know, and yeah. so we try and bridge that gap. That, that takes some skill. Yeah. That, that's an art form for sure. <clears throat> I'm not trying to butt in. I just got something in my throat. Uh, or before we, uh, before we actually get into the meat and potatoes yeah. of, of how to take your music and, and have it earn money for you through this outlet, uh, I want our audience to know that you're the real guy. I, I, I've seen pictures of your studio. It's a yeah. real studio. You, yeah. you go in and you, you, you're you a good you're a good engineer, right? Thank you. I'm, I'm trying. Engineer. I'm learning from you. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to. You know, I try and learn from every one of our composers that come in, and I, I just, I just love the, 
I love the the process of recording music and the songwriting. I just love all of it, you know. And so it's, it's definitely a passion, you know. And I, I've had a chance at Fox to do a couple things, which were fine. I played the lead guitar and recorded everything for mm -hmm. the shark theme for that guitar part. And then they oh, then cool. the guys mixed it in. And then I did a uh, remix for Crystal Method on the Bones theme. I love Crystal nice. Method. And um, so so I've done some stuff, you know, which has been fun too. So it's, it's great to kind of be able to. I've been lucky to be able to kind of do a little bit of everything. No question. No question. In terms, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Let's let's kind of think of, of describe roughly what you do, and then morph that into into how how people at this end of the world and in, in, in our and our audiences end of the world how they actually get things and the process of making a little money off some tracks and some well, music they've got. Well, for me, where it starts, it starts on the pilot, which is when you have an initial idea for a show and a script, and we'll make this pilot. Doesn't mean it's actually going to make air. And this is it's kind of like doing your your demo, your demo. right? Sure. And so. Um, we will meet with the show creator and help them pick out the right composer who, and, and there's a lot of personality involved. It's not necessarily who's got the best chops or who's got the biggest studio. Right. And, um, you know, and we've got guys who've got amazing studios who are great, like Sean Callery, who does Homeland. Mm -hmm. He does Bones as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we also have uh, young composers, uh, female composers as well. A lot of our shows are female based. And nice. there's some great young female composers out there. Um, Wendy and Lisa, who are not young oh, or who Prince. are not new, yeah. but uh, but they're great and they they've uh, they do Touch for us, which ah. is Kiefer Sutherland's show, which ah. is on Fox. Yeah. And so, um, but anyway, we try and get the the right person on board, and then we we follow them through the life of that pilot to make sure it's all going the way everybody wants. And sure. Like I told you, there's a lot of people who have a lot of say. Yeah. And also too, there's very little time. That's the other part about TV, speed is key. Yeah. Because by the time they shoot it, they edit it, and they get to music, you've got 72 hours before it's gotta be turned into a network for them to decide whether or not they want to pick up the entire show. Amazing. And the music at the end is that really last chance to polish or fix. And it's amazing when you take music out of a scene or out of a show, it can be kind of slow. Yeah. And so one way to fix that is to have finding the right tempo for music mm. to put it into those scenes, now push it along. Mm. And so, but that takes some time. And so having guys who are fast is critical. So the issue of dependability becomes huge in your space. Oh yeah. I mean, when you go to the music people, they gotta deliver. Yeah. You don't, you don't have time to mess around. Yeah, especially, especially on the primetime scripted shows. Yeah. You know, that's the reason, it's really hard to just get one of those out of the blue. We normally go with really established guys just because there's so much writing on these guys at the final leg. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a place where you necessarily are just going to try somebody a, new. And there's a lot of money on the line. And there's a lot of money a lot on the line. Is, is all the music that the, sh that the show consumes, is it is it created by that composer or do shows, like, do I have a chance, if I've got a, if I decide I want to do some music and I, I send some music somewhere, how does that, does that, is there a place for that music to get into the show other than what the composer does? Well, I mean, for the most part, we hire that composer for a reason, and that's to do that score, and that's that instrumental bed. And I get asked about, well, hey, I've got some great instrumentals. Mm -hmm. You know, can you use those? Exactly. Sometimes we can, sometimes. Like, you know, in the pilot stage where there's maybe a, a bar scene or something like that, where it's, it's outside of what the composer would normally do, right. and he's still busy trying to fix those scenes that he's had these notes on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll use that, but it, but it's pretty rare to do that. But uh, but then there's the other side of getting your songs in there that you just mix or something, and that's something that we we use a lot of independent music. We use more independent music than all the majors combined. Wow, which people don't realize, mm -hmm. and and we spend millions of dollars a year on on licensed music. Hmm. So. Okay, so so the composer. How, I don't understand. The composer does the music, but then you bring in independent music. How does that? Well, the composer will do the, the score part of it, but sometimes we'll bring in like a, a, a music producer or a band to do a scene because it, you know, oh. it, it fits that scene. Gotcha. Um, or there's a type of music where it's some jazz thing where they really want a real jazz trumpet guy playing and may or may not even be on camera. Well, we'll we might bring in somebody special for that. You know, so it just depends. It can be literally anything. It's case by case. It's really. case by case, and comedies are different than dramas, so it could be sure. something that's got to be silly and goofy. Right. You know what I mean? So you'll bring something in and for when that. So you you'll bring in somebody. Where's your source for finding that somebody? People like you. You know, oh, I mean? you know I, it, seriously, it's, it's people like you and people that I know and, um, and people that we meet 
you know, through managers and, and different folks. And, and you know, I, I've been there 12 years now, and after a while, you kind of, you, you know a little group and circle of people yeah. that you can, again, that you can trust. And it, the speed thing, where I can call them at the end of the day and say, you know, I need something probably by noon tomorrow. Can mm -hmm. you at least right. get at least a rough to me? And they can do it. Right. You know, right. And, and that's hard to do. Yeah, I was working on uh, White, White Men Can't Jump, that movie. I, th I think the director's name was Ron Shelton or something like that. And my friend and I, Todd Chapman, um, they called us late one night and said, we need an in credit song for the end of the movie. Right. We, we had to work all night and present it in the morning. It was sure. so much fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, okay, now the hierarchy is, is, is you're here, then um, is the supervisor, music supervisor, is he below you? You hire the music supervisor. Yeah, we hire the music supervisor. And the supervisor and the controls the composer, right? No, nope. the composer and the music supervisor are um, I mean, really, the, the person who's controlling the music for their show is the show creator. It's their oh, vision that okay. we're all trying to mm -hmm. make the best mm -hmm. and trying to take what's in their head and what they've dreamed about when they're writing that script mm -hmm. to make that a reality. Okay. So the composer is his own gig, and the music supervisor is his own gig. And they, and, but they, they work together, and they'll go to uh, every episode. We'll have what we call a spotting session. Yep. And that's where you go through the somewhat final cut of the show and decide when does the music come in here. Right does it at all. Right. Maybe she should just play sign. And they make all those decisions. Should it be a song or should it be his score? Mm -hmm. And so they'll go through all that and that's, that's where they work together. Also the music editor plays a major role in taking these cues and then there was an edit that needs to be shorter but the cue ended five seconds later. Mm -hmm. So he's able to kind of, whether it's a fade or whether, whatever it is, he's able to kind of finesse those things. So the music editor plays a, a big role too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I know what a cue is but can you explain a, a cue. Well, a, a cue is basically uh, any sort of music uh, audio that's played underneath the underneath the scene. So it can be a song, it can be the instrumental score, um, that it can be anything, and that's that's cue. And, and it can be as short as a few seconds. Yeah. It could be three or four minutes long. Right. You know. So right. and we actually have a team that will, when the show is finally scored, where they actually go through it with stopwatches and have their cue sheet out. Yep. The theme is eight seconds long. The next cue goes in is X amount, and they write all that down, and that goes on the official cue sheet, mm -hmm. which then goes out to publishers and, and goes to your you performance rights, and that's how you get paid. So you want to be on that cue sheet if you're a songwriter. Big time. Yeah, Big that's important. Song. I've got a lot of friends that want to score movies, but I've got a lot of friends for some reason that, that want to do music supervision. Can you describe that position? I'm a little conflicted because I'm uh, it seems like seems like you'd want to be the composer, not the music supervisor, right? Well, yeah, they're two different, completely different what jobs. What does the music supervisor do? Well, a music supervisor, their job is to make sure all the music is clearable to you. If you want to use a Beatles song or a, or an Usher song or whatever it might be, you need to go to the record company, you need to go to the publisher, make sure they're okay with you even using it, yep. make sure it's not being saved for some big feature film or mm -hmm. whatever it might be. And then also, too, there's money involved. And so the music supervisors call, make sure it's within the budget. Music supervisors will also deal when you have an on-camera and make sure everything's prepared for that, getting the right band. Is it the band that the show creator thinks is cool? Right. You know, does right. the network think this is going to be a cool thing to have this band? All, they do all that stuff. The composer deals with that score. Gotcha. That's the, you know, the, the score stuff, the instrumental that, gotcha. that stuff. That's what he deals with. Mm. So they're kind of they, they work together, but okay. one's not on top of another. Everybody's it's, it's you know. separate silos. So then, yeah. yeah, and, and, and but they all but they all work together. Yeah. 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 It seems to me I remember back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, um, did movie movie companies? Uh, uh, some of my terms aren't good because I don't live in that world. But uh, the movie people, they kind of had like their own little library of, of vinyl that they would they would make available to the various people that needed music in par different parts to help me or different parts of the process. And then if, like if I was a director and I needed a part for a song, I'd go to my in-house guy, tell him what I needed. He, he had every song memorized in right. catalog. He would draw it out, that it would make it in the movie. But nowadays the internet's changed all that, right? Now there's ways, um, now, now like, like if you've got some music, you can get it to certain spots on the internet and then that same director, instead of going to an in-house to get that music, he would go to an internet site and get, and get the music. Am I correct? Yeah, I mean, there's those places. I mean, for us, that scenario that you, 
you know, what you were talking about, that normally happens on a pilot when, again, there's a lack of time, the composer's doing his best to get everything, but sometimes there's just a couple new scenes that need something, and we'll call, we call that temp music. Yep. And a lot of times we'll take scores from big movies or whatever was hot this past year, mm -hmm. that Trent Reznor score for The Social Network That's was really huge. Incredible. Every pilot wanted to have some of that in there. Yep. But you know, a TV show, the, the scores have to have original music mm -hmm. in them, mm -hmm. so we can't just take from big feature films and put it in our shows mm -hmm. because they have publishers on that scored music Absolutely. and you know and other studios might own that so we, we have to have original music in there we'll sometimes use these libraries on on shows where they have financial you know constraints sure. on what they can do mm -hmm. and um, or like I said where it needs to have some sort of polka music mixed with hip-hop <laughs> or whatever it might be and some of these libraries will actually have that they'll have done that for something and and we're able to use it. So sometimes we do go to them. Plus yeah. your challenge is, or part of your challenge I'm supposing, is that these TV shows, are, they need a signature, a musical signature. Yeah, that's another thing too, is like people will, will, will hire a composer and like sometimes they'll say, well can we use his score from, you know, Ally McBeal that he did. You know, which, which you know, just as a temp and stuff, which is great, and it was great, it was great music, but, uh, but it sounds like the score, believe it or not, from Ally McBeal or the X-Files, <laughs> and you, once you hear it, when the scene, you start to, gosh, I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like the X-Files, because it is from mm -hmm. the X-Files. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. needs to be its own sound. It yeah. needs to have its own feel. And people don't realize how much effort goes into trying to establish that. And that's really hard to do right. when so many shows have been made and, you know, there's only 12 notes. Right, right. You know? <laughs> right, exactly. It seems like, um, maybe I read this, but it seems like the real, real, reality shows um, have such low budgets, they might be a good candidate for some of this type of... Yeah. Yeah, they are. They'll, they, they tend to go to these libraries and, uh, and utilize them a little more than the scripted shows. That's one thing. I only work on the scripted shows. Mm -hmm. you know, the reality shows are, are a different beast unto themselves. Gotcha. Uh, but on the scripted shows, it's, it's custom work. Yeah. It's, it's made for that show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, we were talking earlier, and IMDB, uh, the letters IMDB, uh, in case they're looking it up, that's a big source of, yes. of information about all things we've discussed so far, right? Yeah. IMDb Pro, you have to yeah. pay for it. Yeah, well, and I think they got a smaller version that doesn't have quite as much info that's yeah. also good. And I mean, I have that on my phone for when I'm in a meeting and if somebody brings up a name of somebody who I'm not quite sure of, I'll look them up real fast. And, um, you know, it's important to be on there if, if you've got some credits or something, or if you're not and you're looking to work or be an assistant for a composer, which I highly recommend if you can get in and do that, that's something mm -hmm. I think your audience um, should look to do is try to be an assistant for these composers. And you, you can find one. the composers where? On IMDB, you can look them up there and start knowing the names, seeing mm -hmm. the movies they've done or TV mm -hmm. shows. And sometimes they'll even have like a contact, like a manager or something like that. Is Hollywood Reporter still in, in business? Are they still in business? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm a I think they're. Guy. I think they're still in business. Okay. It wasn't, is that a source? Yeah, so actually, and I think once a year they have like a film and TV composer uh, guide thing, which yeah, will name later. stuff, you yeah. know. Okay. But IMDb is better, I think. And um, I, I don't know if you can answer this. It might might be a, might be an incorrect question, but what, what can you expect to make, like if it, like on a reality show, they take one of your pieces of music off the internet, 200, 300 a cue, or how much can you make? Um, well, that, that'll vary on what they have, you know, probably in that range, you know, and then for a scripted show, uh, it's probably more like a couple thousand. You and know. you get paid every time the show is aired, right? Yeah, every time it's aired. And what about, like, I hear these rumors, like the guy that wrote the theme song for, I think it was Paul Anker, one of those guys for The Tonight Show, he made, like, tons of money every time it was played, two or three thousand, and, of course, yeah. that's ten grand a week. And are, are, well, are themes, themes yeah, still? Yeah, themes are good. You know, you, you, that's, that's, uh, How do you get access to those? Me. Yeah. Oh. So, exactly. you know, yeah, that's a studio thing, and also with the network, and you know, and the, and so the themes are a whole other, whole other thing. Where sometimes we'll have a, um, you know, a popular artist do a theme. Um, sometimes the show creator does a theme, like on Homeland, Sean Callery did the theme for that. Okay. You know, but it had to have the sense and the feel of the score. Mm -hmm. So that made sense for that. So those are all on a case by case basis. And in, in, in my world, international is now as big a market as domestic. Uh, I know that you do mostly domestic, but is there is there 
the same process going on in, in your world where, where, the, where, where our audience can have access to the entire world? Or do, like, how, like, like India makes a lot of movies. Is that something that they can do too? Yeah, well, in the same way with the Asian countries too. You know, they're making their own movies and stuff. Actually, I, I had a friend that was in my office the other day and he's making two movies in uh, Singapore, you know, doing the score for them. So, you know, but our shows, the reason that they're so good for primetime is our shows air all over the world. Right. And that's the reason we have to have, that's the reason the music supervisor is important because they get the rights to cover Clear all, all yeah. the entire world. Yeah. So, and same way with the score. We're about to go to Batter's Box. Before we do, I, I'd love for them, I wish I had a, a, a video of it. Maybe you can help us out, but it, just give me an overview of, of the tension, the pressure, the, the environment of the dub stage. Then explain what the dub stage is because I got creamed on a dub stage right. one day. <laughs> Well, you know, that's where that's that final stage where we're putting all the music, you're putting the sound effects in, um, and you're, you're, you're doing the levels for, how, you know, how loud should that dialogue be with that music over it? It's all those little fine... Describe it physically, though, the big screen and everything. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, you have a huge, giant screen, sometimes multiple screens so everybody can see it, and normally done on a huge console. It you takes know. three people to run the oh, console. Totally. It looks like Star, you know, Star Trek Enterprise, you know, and... Um, you know, it's the final chance to, to fix something with a lot of people biting their fingernails, hoping this is going to be good, and it's your last chance to say something. So a lot of tension, and, and it's a lot of tension, and you have a lot of you know, you'll have a network people there, you'll have the studio people there, then you have the show creator and his team there, mm -hmm. then you have the music team. Mm. You know what I mean? So mm. you know, but that's the reason that you try and pick great people. So there's a personality, and you get along. You can com communication is key. Yeah, exactly. So you can talk to each other. Absolutely. You want to loosen up your arm and throw the first pitch? I've been loose, man. Let's set he, he up batter's box. He issued a challenge to me, Herb. What's that? He issued a challenge I've to been me. Want, I've been wanting to do oh, this batter's box. You, Ward's aggressive, man. Listen, I know. He, this, is, this is not... This, this is my favorite part. Yeah, every every yeah. batter's box. I watch, I watch every... I'm just waiting to see what they're going to say. So pressure's on I, you, pal. I, I didn't know, so I asked him, you want to do a batter's box about your favorite color of equipment, you know? He's like, <laughs> like, he's like no, MF, I'm going to go for the plug-ins. Just don't even tell me what you're going to do. Just throw it at me. I'm going to so clean your clock. let's throw the first pitch. Lead vocal. Lead vocal for what, microphone or? Give me, give me compressor and EQ. Compre no, mi no mics today. No mics, okay. Because you told me you knew mics, so I'm going uh, to... To me, I, I've got that uh, the 1176, the AE, the blue stripe one, that, oh, that, 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 that limited edition one. I absolutely love that. It's got the two to one. And so, uh, so I use that one. And then um, I use the EQ on the BAE. I got the 1084 mic pre, and so I'll use that EQ a little bit. Yeah, Mark. On Mark occasion. Mark's one of our buddies. He's of yeah, our he's, he makes else. really good stuff. Yeah. 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 It can be plugins too. I'll give you. I'll give you that advantage. Background vocals. Uh, on background vocals, uh, I'll still. Um, sometimes I, I've got the uh, that retro 176, which I really like. I'll sometimes use that, and. Um, and then again, I, I use that EQ on that uh, BAE, or I'll, or sometimes I'll, depending on you know that's the one that I was talking uh, with a couple guys. You know, when you're recording in a home and environment, sometimes you have to EQ before stuff, you know. And mm -hmm. So I use that API, that 550B, mm -hmm. just to kind of clean it up a little bit. So sometimes I use that depending on where I'm at. The four band one. Yeah. yeah. Acoustic guitar. Uh, acoustic guitar. I use my API, the 512C mic pre, mm -hmm. and then that 550B. And sometimes a distressor. Okay, you're a big distressor fan. I know that. Yeah. Uh, piano. Uh, piano. Uh, I'll use the um, I'll use the API mic pre's and then uh, 550b's again on that. Okay. Bass guitar. Bass guitar. The uh, again the API and then I'll use the uh, 1170 uh, or the uh, 176 that retro 176 oh, and then. I'll do your little trick about doing a couple things, and I'll come out of that into a distressor. So not one's doing too much. I learned that from you. Okay. And so I, that's what I do He's on the He's trying base. to kiss ass and score points. Don't grade him on that, Herb. No, no, I was trying to work out if there was publisher. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Electric guitar. Uh, electric guitar, um, the TG2. I use the TG2, Ooh. Chandler, Mike Pree, um, and those 550Bs. Uh, for EQ and then no compression. I think I got him, Herb. I think I got him. 808s. 808s. 
When you do hip hop. When I do hip hop. <laughs> I got it. Uh, I let that one alone. I just let it go as is. There you go. You like I'll your best. I, I go all <laughs> natural. You don't have to compress everything. That's right. <laughs> okay, you're gonna you're gonna get a score quickly, but you're right because 808s now are so well done. You don't have to do anything. No. Nope. I was gonna trick you, but son of a bitch, you got me here. What did he score? How's he do? The judges are tabulating right now. I'm just okay. waiting for the course. <laughs> <laughs> Bing! Best all around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no question. That, that was really good. No, we, before the show started, we're gonna, before we go to corner office, um, we'll talk. We're going to talk amongst our Ward and I are going to talk later about how our audience can potentially sort of get stuff to someplace and maybe get it on your radar or, or, or people or composers yeah. in your universe on your radar. So we'll try to sort of figure out a model. Give us some time. We'll we'll get it together. We'll talk about that afterwards. Sure. Correct? Is that a, is that yeah. a possibility? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, while, so that'd be fun. While GI's grabbing a couple of questions, I want to I want to brag on you a little bit. Your show, Sons of Anarchy. You told me earlier. Correct me if I'm wrong. That that the original music for that show is getting a million downloads on yeah. on iTunes, iTunes and the yeah. album. What did the album do? Uh, well, the first soundtrack went to number three last week when the show came back, so that was an older soundtrack that we have. Wow. We've got a newer one coming out. But, uh, yeah, we do these great covers. Uh, Bob Thiel's our show producer and composer on that one, mm. which is pretty rare to do. And sure. he, he does a great job of doing, taking these old 60s songs and doing them with basically unknown artists for the most part nice. and uh, doing these really cool kind of ethereal, moody covers. And it's just and been Glee, really great. Glee's on fire too, right? Yeah, in terms of it's huge, yeah, it's a huge show. Separate animal. Yeah. GI, you over there? That's GI Griffin in our corner office. You got a few things for our, for our guests? I sure do. There's lots of action. Fire away, sir. All right. The first one is from Pelio F. Meat uh, for Ward. Are your composers usually writing all cues individually throughout the season? Example, uh, every episode scored to picture, or do they give you a few longer tracks, stings, et cetera, that are edited throughout the season? Oh, what a great question. Oh, that, that is a great question. And really the difference between those two things is uh, the dramas are, are made where they actually score to picture. And they'll literally have the scene up, and a lot of those guys, a lot of them are really piano-based guys, even mm -hmm. though they'll use strings, and they'll literally play they'll to play the scene. To uh, the comedies will do a little bit more of the uh, library base because it's just on most shows like uh, like Modern Family, for example, doesn't have that much of a score. It's a lot of stings and bumpers as you yeah. come out into the scene in a commercial. Yeah. Yeah. So they'll do a little bit of a bed where they they kind of know the stuff they like and they'll make different changes and uh, and so that's that's how they do. Mm. That's the differences between the two. Go ahead, Gia. I uh, got a qu quite a few people asking this one from Fat Keys and Contour 66. Uh, how does one submit to the publisher uh, and to other companies for use of uh, consideration on the show? Um, well, that, that's a uh, that's a tough one. I mean, because we don't take unsolicited material a lot, like a record company or something like that. Um, you know, the best way really is to get in through music supervisors, which you can find on IMDb. Mm -hmm. And to uh, and to email them and send them send them your music that way. Gi Gi. When when the the music is submitted, is it like a full track, or do you submit, or do when when these submissions, or do they like a, a vocal, a track, and split uh, out? Yeah, or? I mean, normally we, we like no, it's it's a full mixed track. It's okay. a full mix track. So you don't have to have a situation where during dialogue you would just use the instrumental or so you could lower Well, it's, it's always good to have an instrumental done of your song mm -hmm. because a lot of times we'll just want to use the vocal at the very end to go into commercial right at the very end of that scene. But then the first minute and a half was the instrumental because you have the dialogue there. So And, and our music editor is the one who will actually make that work. And, and we will chop earlier, the earlier, you said sometimes two. composers don't know who to go to to get mixes and stuff done, correct? Right, well, like, like, a, like a young composer right. might have been doing all of it himself mm -hmm. or herself, mm -hmm. and you know, at a certain stage, they get too busy and they just simply can't keep up with it, and that's what I thought would be great for your listeners, that's, is to find these young composers and say, hey, you know, I'm a great mixer, I can be mixing those cues for you while you go back and work on those new ones that you need to get done by tomorrow that's morning. Those and those are in colleges and schools like AI. Yeah, and, uh, and you can also you can find these young composers at uh, me, uh, film schools, USC, yeah. and I mean all over the country, and uh, and and meet these young that's guys. A, that's and that's a, a great partnership. That's I a think. good place for us to to yeah. talk about. We'll 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 work all that out. GI, hit this one. 
All right, got another one for Ward from uh, More Base, please. Uh, was there a particular hump that you had to get over in getting to your position now that stands out amongst all of them that we can learn from? What was, what was the biggest hurdle of hurdles? Biggest <laughs> hurdle of hurdles? Place. Getting on Pensado's place. Um, <laughs> you know what, the, I think the probably the, low. <laughs> you know what, the biggest hurdle is, is being in the town where you can do this for a living. Yeah. You know, that was, I, I grew up in Indiana, in Lafayette, Indiana, and I, and I lived in Arkansas for a while, and I was in the Midwest. And you, you can't do it from yeah. there. You, you have to be, in my business, you have to be in Hollywood. No question. There's, there's no other know, way around there's it. No, and you can't be in Santa Barbara. Right. You can't be right. in San Diego. No, you got to be. <laughs> you got to be here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so that, that's the biggest hurdle, because that's a life change, mm -hmm. and it's a major commitment, you know, mm -hmm. to pick up and move and move to a town and... And hey, come here and not know anybody and just go about three it. transplants. Yeah. All who made that yeah. decision at yeah. some point in time. Best move ever made. Me too. GI? All right, and this question is for uh, Ward or Dave from Vaughn Holland. Question about collaboration. I've been trying to figure out how to make a writer and producer team work, pr uh, projecting two years into the future with a composer and promoter. It seems the biggest danger is uh, personal ambition and impulsivity when starting from scratch to when the first money starts coming in. What's your advice in terms of written agreements to be made to give such a project and its invested actors a chance? Ooh, Lord help us all, that's a herb question. That's a herb question. <laughs> uh, you'd have to repeat that. Why don't, why don't you get it down to just its sum? Yeah, basically uh, within a writer and producer team that once the money starts rolling in, sometimes right. you have issues, what's the best way to prevent that via contracts or agreements and such? Well, you, you definitely want to, want to have a, a, a lawyer help you out with that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the, the biggest thing I can say is this is a long-term long -term thing. This is not a short-term, oh, I got my one song and I'm done. Right. There, there's no big, oh, I, I got $100,000 off my one song. There's no money like that. that. It's way. a bunch of, it's volume. It's, it's volume it, and it's right. being in it for the long term. So you want to work with people that you have a friendship with and a, and a and a, and a trust. If you don't have a trust with them, then you need to find some other people to work with. And, you know, to, to add to that, every, every relationship is a relationship. The dynamic is the same. So you need open communication. You need transparency. You have to do what Ward said and think about the long term and realize that, you know, you have to work together to get past things. It's not, yeah. it's not I got you, you didn't get me. If you're going to do that, you're going to be out of this in a minute. And plus, nobody wants to work with people right. like this. This is, this is a big family, and it grows over time. I don't know how many of my friends have come back and have helped me in a major bind. And, you know, and so, and for very little money sometimes, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. And that's when you need them the most. Absolutely. Always. And so I always try, as best I can, to try and come back and help them and throw them something Absolutely. when I get it. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. One of the things, guys, I, one of the things I learned from Herb is, is don't be shy about your expectations going into a relationship. I've been burned a few times where I thought I was going in as one thing. It turns out the person I was working for thought I was just an engineer when I was actually doing some writing, and, and luckily the song didn't make any money, or unluckily it didn't make any money, but, but Herb always says, no matter how uncomfortable, develop the habits to, 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 to clarify your expectations going into every situation that you're in, and then there's no surprises for anyone. A couple of emails just to make sure they understand. And lawyers are a last resort, but they're certainly necessary. The, uh the, the time goes so fast. I know, it does fly. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we, we get prepared for all this stuff, and then boom, it's over. Yeah. So, look, here's a couple things. One, um, it's going to be exciting to talk afterwards about stuff we could do together. Sure. Two, we are in the process of making sure that um, audio for our audience is goes beyond just what happens with the faders and records. Right. So to have you on is such a great gift. We're, we're gonna Absolutely. keep pushing that envelope and going to other places right. and showing how audio is applied every place. Imagine a world without audio, oh, yeah. but you can't imagine how much audio is used until you sort of expose. And so having you on and talking about this stuff is just a great thing for well, audio. Thank you for so having the, me. So the last question, which we always do, is you've got to come back. Matter of fact, you don't have a choice. Yeah, so well, I'm just, you know, I'm I don't live you. far from here, oh, so, you we'll, know. You know what, we'll shoot at your house. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna bring by. the desk over. Come on <laughs> by. Thanks, you wanna host the show next week? <laughs> <laughs> sure, I got a little yard work to do around there. What a pleasure, what a pleasure. Dave, wrap us up, take us home. Oh, okay, guys, I'm such a dumbass about it the world that, 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 that Ward lives in. So I did, I did my homework, I did some research for you guys. There's three websites I ran across that have some good tutorials, they have some good 
forums that you can interact with other people trying to get into this world. And um, I cruised around those for just a few hours and I learned a lot. I learned not quite enough to ask intelligent questions, but um, go to uh, IMDB Pro. Uh, on one of the guys on the forums thought that uh, that a guy was saying, I am, A-M, I am DB. He's like, what's a DB? The letter I, the letter M, letter D, B, pro. I think it was somewhere around 150 bucks for a year, so it's very reasonable. Another great website that I learned a lot from was called musiclibrary.com, and then the third one, licensequote.com. Go there, hang around, spend a little time, nothing comes easy, work for it, and we'll see you at the top, or next week, whichever comes first. Yeah.